We are all out here trying to snatch that bag and become software developers, but it's not all rainbows and sunshine to get there. Software engineering is a complex field which requires a lot of knowledge and skills. The good news is that these skills can be learned by anybody who has the will to do so. And I believe that you do. Hi everybody, it's Samantha and Chanel, and we're back with another episode that you don't want to miss on the Deeper Than Tech podcast, where we talk about how to grow your career in an industry that was not designed with us in mind. We'll be- so we are kind of in our careers now. We're past like kind of the breaking into tech stage, and throughout our career, our challenges are going to get a little harder. But how do you know what to learn next? In this data world and landscape, I think figuring out what to learn next will come to you. And that's not to say not to be in like intentional, but it's more like things are moving so fast. I highly recommend just staying in touch with like various networks, LinkedIn, Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, really all of it. And that's how it'll be communicated, like what best to learn next, because what we're learning today, it's less about learning that technology and being ready to shift over. So right now, one of the things I'm working with most is DBT, the data build tool. And that's something that wasn't really in the landscape. In my master's degree from 2018 to 2020, it did not come up once. It may have existed, but no one was really using it. And now today, everyone's using it. And maybe in two years from now, it'll be something different. But the way I'll know about it is by staying in my network. Is there anybody in particular that people should start following that kind of like the thought leaders of the industry? Thought leaders. I definitely recommend Katie Bauer on Twitter. She's excellent to follow. There's also various different, I know like data science for all in general, like less as a person, but more as just like thought leader, like following that as well as there are a few more that I'll send over later, but yeah, definitely a lot of places to follow. Yeah, sometimes it's hard to follow so many people and like know who's like doing what because the world is so hectic. Do you have like a North Star that you kind of go to like like somewhere you're trying to aim for and it, it might pivot, but like they, they said that you should have like a five-year goal for your career. Do you kind of have one of those? I do and it will shift. So I, I try not to stay too fixated on it, but yeah, a North Star definitely to guide the way. And for me, it's been artificial intelligence and machine learning. I knew that I wanted to be in that space. And I thought that I would go for data scientist roles that would have more day to day with it. But as I made my way through my career, I noticed that I really wanted to be building the pipelines and like solving the puzzle of getting the data from its raw like unstructured state into like a more clean and modular like lego piece kind of way and so i still have artificial intelligence and machine learning as that north star but now i want to build the pipelines for the machine learning so right now i build the pipelines for the analytics and so my north star is to one day get to the machine learning engineer. What are some things that you're doing to get to your North Star? So for me, it is staying connected to folks that are doing the artificial intelligence and machine learning internal to my job, as well as external, as well as looking things up on my on my own. So like keeping up some level of self-study and like staying in the loop with various talks online and various groups. Are you coding outside and learning outside of your day nine to five? I would say not right now, but I was. Part of my earlier shift in my career was that in my role, I was bored. (laughs) You know, sometimes that happens that I really wanted more of a challenge. I wanted to upskill. And so that's what I was doing outside of my nine to five. But I really find that once you're in a role where like you're excited to learn, there's all kinds of opportunities to not get too overwhelmed with it and to focus on the internal. So yeah, that would be my suggestion. So if you're like kind of bored in your role, you should find a different role to help you kind of go towards your North Star. Is that what you're saying? It can either be finding the new role or finding ways to code outside of work, maybe just like at home with self-study or maybe like a part-time boot camp that I know some friends are doing. So for me, I did part-time, a part-time master's a while back. And then when I needed more than that, I started the self-study because 
I was not going back to school. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You know? <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm not going back to yeah. school either. It's, it's no. a lot to go to school. So were you self-studying with a group of people? I was self-studying at first on my own, but then eventually I found the Leon Noel's 100 Devs. If anyone's familiar with that, it's just like a free boot camp that Leon was hosting on Twitch and he was teaching people how to code just from scratch. So he taught software development of front front end and back end. So the front end being like HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and then eventually moved over into like the back end languages. So it was there at home. I was by myself, but there were thousands of people also following along in like a large discord group. We were able to learn like together. <laughs> so yeah. I think that's a new style of learning now is like, we're not in classrooms anymore. We're more like mm-hmm. in cohorts and we're like, have virtual friends that study yeah. together and keep us motivated. So that sounds like a, a very good course to have. You mentioned like front end and back end. Do you ever feel like you need to learn those technologies in order for you to learn more about machine learning? I believe that you don't need to learn those for machine learning, but that's kind of the funny thing that I didn't know that I would be an analytics engineer, but as I learned those tools, I saw how they could be incorporated and were actually really helpful in learning where analytics engineering fit from the data backend to get the data from the database to get it to be like a more clean version for the analysts to use, as well as how it would be used from the visualization side so that anyone like using it, like the user interface and experience. So doing that coding front end back end helped me understand how to present the data better and you know work with it. I love that. I love that you dove in a little bit into these other fields to kind of like boost up your own skills for your current job. I'm always a big advocate of having T-shaped skills, like where you have a little bit of knowledge of everything, but then you go really in depth on one thing and it makes you so much better as an engineer. For me, I love product. I'm not gonna be a product manager, at least for now. It's not my North Star, but I think it's very <laughs> important for me as a front end because I am user facing. So I am talking to users. So I have to know what they want. So my last question I have for you, if you're learning a new skill, should you create a small project or should you just build upon another project that somebody else has created? I think when you're starting out, making a project from scratch, from start to end is helpful to kind of show like what you're able to do and show your potential. I think that as we get further along in our careers, being able to add on to a project is a lot closer to what we end up doing in roles. I think someone in the data science world and an analytics engineer, a lot of what will be done, some of it will be from scratch, but you're working with a team to all build it together and like, you know, adding on to it. So I think depending on where you are looking for roles, entry level, you might want to create something like from start to finish. But as you go deeper into your career, showing that you're able to add a unique value to something that already exists is super important to show in interviews to to companies. I love that unique value. I have been in a company that has done greenfield projects, but it's never truly greenfield, right? You're always still having to deal with the, the ecosystem of everything else. Maybe like there's a design system you still have to learn, or maybe the back end is still wrapped in like a monolith architecture. So Ooh, yeah. I, yeah, so much is happening. <laughs> money, money. So thank you, Chanel. I love to see that you have grown in your career. And that's what this podcast is about.